Hi, and welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Economics. This is Unit 3, Part 4. In today's lesson we will be learning about occupations and earnings. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Please subscribe, like and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Why do people work? This comes down to wage and non-wage factors. Let's first look at wage factors. Most people will supply their labor to firms to earn an income. Firms pay wages to workers to supply their labor to produce goods and services. Paid employment therefore provides people with money to buy the goods and services they need and want and cannot produce themselves. The supply of labor to an occupation depends on the wage rate for the job. This wage rate can come in many different forms. Time rate per hour work per employee. This is usually called the hourly rate. Workers' pay is linked directly to how many hours they work. Piece rate per unit produced per employee. Employees are paid a certain amount for each unit they produce. How much they earn is linked directly to how many items they produce. Performance-related pay. Employees are paid a commission on sales or an annual bonuses. This depends on how much they have produced. Now let's talk about non-wage factors. There is an impressive array of these. They are used to attract employees to a certain type of job. You might want to pause here briefly to read through the list of these factors. A person will compare the advantages and disadvantages of different jobs or occupations in order to choose one to specialize in. All the wage and non-wage factors that affect the attractiveness of a particular job or occupation are called its net advantages. So what would be some of the net advantages of a job? Let's look at a surgeon first. A surgeon's job is highly skilled and in short supply. The job involves many years of study and practice with little or no income. They often work long and often unsociable hours of work including evenings and weekends. There is intense pressure at work. The high earnings available here are called a compensating differential. Now let's look at an office assistant. An office assistant's job is low or unskilled work. There is little training involved. The job tends to be five days a week. There are few responsibilities and work may become boring. There is a large supply of labor relative to demand. The wages tend to be relatively low. Most people tend to specialize at work. There are advantages and disadvantages to this. Some of the advantages include, they make best use of their skills and abilities. They can improve their skills further by repeatedly carrying out the same or similar tasks. More experienced and skilled employees usually earn more than less experienced and unskilled employees because they are more productive and demand for their labor by firms is greater. There are disadvantages, however. These include things like They must rely on others to produce the goods and services they cannot produce themselves. Doing the same job for many years may become boring. People can lose their jobs if their skills or occupations become unwanted as consumer demand and or technology changes. So, how is the wage rate set? Well, the labor market is just that. A market. It is governed by supply and demand. As the wage rate for a particular occupation rises, the supply of labor to that occupation expands. The occupation becomes more attractive compared to leisure and other occupations. The demand for labor contracts reduces. The labor becomes more expensive to employ relative to capital equipment. Let's look more closely at the demand for labor. What causes the demand for labor to increase? An increase in consumer demand. An increase in labor productivity. An increase in the cost of equipment. A fall in non-wage employment costs. Examples are pension contributions and health and safety costs. What causes the demand for labor to fall? A fall in consumer demand. A fall in labor productivity. 
A fall in the cost of equipment. A rise in non-wage employment costs. Now let's consider the graphs. If the demand for labor rises from D to D1, the wage rate rises from W to W1 and employment increases from E to E1. If demand falls from D to D2, the wage rate falls from W to W2 and employment falls to E2. But, how about the supply of labor? What causes the supply of labor for an occupation to increase? An increase in its net advantages. An increase in the population of working age. An increase in the amount and quality of education and training available in relevant skills. What causes the supply of labor to an occupation to fall? A reduction in its net advantages. A fall in the population of working age. A fall in, in the amount and quality of education and training available in relevant skills. Now let's consider the graphs. If the supply moves from S to S2, the wage rate falls from W to W2 and more people are employed at E2. If the supply fall from S to S1, the wage rate rises from W to W1 and employment fall to E1. What explains wage differentials, or the amount that people receive for their labor? Some workers are paid more than others because they are more highly skilled than others and are much in demand by employers. They are more productive and add more to output and revenue than others. They work in dangerous jobs, for example soldiers or firefighters. They work on sociable hours. They have more information than other workers about where the best paid jobs are. They are more able than others to move location or change their occupation to increase their pay. What happens when a government interferes in the market with minimum wage legislation? Minimum wage laws exist to raise the wages of the lowest paid workers. Improved wages may also motivate them to increase their productivity. But some employers argue that minimum wage laws increase costs and reduce the demand for labor. Let's look at this graphically. The free market equilibrium wage rate is W. If the minimum wage is set at W1 there will be an excess supply of labor. This will reduce the quantity of labor demand to Q1. A reduction in the quantity. But Q2 people would want to supply their labor at this rate. If the minimum wage is set at below W it will be below the equilibrium wage rate and have no effect. Governments must be careful when setting the rate for minimum wage. The governments may intervene in labor markets and other was too. This may be too. Protect the rights of employees and employers. For example, health and safety regulations and minimum rest periods. They can also outlaw and regulate restrictive practices that may be used by powerful trade unions and major employers. An example of this is outlawing strikes by trade unions. The government may want to reduce unemployment. This can be achieved by government training schemes, or to provide subsidies to encourage firms to locate in areas of high unemployment. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.